doing and what he wants to continue to do. Well, you know, I just want to be able to uh, be obedient to the Lord Jesus Christ and uh, want to get right into the message this morning. And I just, uh, God begins to impress things upon me and then he begins to reveal. Sometimes a sermon will grow and uh, sometimes I want to pour an ocean through a thimble and uh, sometimes you can't get an ocean through a thimble in just a few minutes. And so I just thank God for His Word and how His Word just continues to begin to uh, open up and reveal and show us things that we haven't uh, seen before. And so that's my desire today, that we would hear what thus saith the Lord. Can we say amen? How many of you are hungry like Ashley? Ashley says she's hungry. Praise God. We need to be hungry for the Word. Amen? You know, we went through a time of prayer and fasting and... Uh, you know, obviously we get hungry for certain foods, but you know what? We need to stay hungry for the Word of God. Can we say amen? And that's what fasting and prayer does many times. It takes away the appetites of the world, and it brings us into an appetite for the things of the Lord. And how many of you know that's the type of appetites that we need to have? Can we say amen? So I want us to stand for the reading of the Word. I want us to go back to Joshua. Go back to Joshua. And uh, we're going to move a little forward uh, today, but I want to start with the scriptures that I shared last week. And um, we want to um, start reading again, Joshua chapter 1, starting with verse 2. And when you're there, can you say amen? Amen. amen. Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise and go over this Jordan, you and all of this people, and to the land in which I'm given them, the children of Israel. Every place that your soul and your foot shall tread upon, I have given you. As I said unto Moses, from the wilderness unto this Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, all of the land of the Hittites and the great sea towards the going down of the sun shall be your territory. No man shall be able to stand before you all of the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and of a good courage. For to this people you shall divide as an inheritance the land in which I swore to the fathers to give them. Verse 7, only be strong and very courageous that you may observe to do according to all of my law, which Moses my servant commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left hand that you may prosper wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, that you may observe and do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your ways prosperous, and then you will have good success. Have by not commanded you, be strong and of a good courage. Do not be afraid nor dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. May God bless the reading of the Word this morning. I'm going to speak to you on the subject of Move Forward and Conquer, Part 2. Move Forward and Conquer. Can we say that together? Move Forward and Conquer. Father, this morning as we stand in Your presence, God, we praise You. We thank You for Your Word. Holy Spirit, we acknowledge You and thank You. You're the teacher. And God, we just continue to pray that You'd open up our eyes and our hearts. Help us to hear what thus saith the Lord. Help us speak to every one of us, Lord, in a specific uh, way, Lord, that we would hear and know. Father, I'm praying, O oh Lord God, that you would just move us, move us, each and every one of us, move us corporately, move us individually, Lord, into the area, the assignments that you would have for each and every one of us. So, Father, we just thank you for your steadfast love. We thank you, Lord God, for what you want to do, and we give you praise, glory, and honor. Amen and amen. You may be seated this morning. As I started last week, I'll start this week, that there's always two dynamics working in the Christian's life. We're either waiting on God or God is waiting on us. And many times it's simultaneously. In other words, how many of you spend time in prayer? How many have prayed a prayer? Every time that you begin to pray that prayer, it's like a seed that is cast into the ground. And God is the one who wants us to pray. Can we say amen? He says, ask, seek, 
knock. He says, call upon me and I will show you great and mighty things that you don't know. So God is the one who invites us into that personal relationship with him. Can we say amen? How many of you have a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ? We need to have a personal relationship with the Lord. We need to spend time in prayer. But when you begin to pray and you begin to cry out to the Lord, then there's a process. In other words, there's a waiting period. And so God might answer that prayer instantaneously like she does, uh, like he does with my wife, just, you know, when we need to go into a restaurant. Isn't that something? But anyway, uh, many times, you know, we find that that prayer, it might take a day, it may take a week, it may take a month, it may take years. But God hears, God cares, and God's timing is the right timing. But when that seed goes into the ground, that prayer and that seed goes into the ground is a process. That seed must fall to the ground and die. It must germinate. And there's a time in which it will sprout and bear fruit. How many of you give God praise today for answering prayer? So there we're waiting. So when you're praying and you're saying, Oh God, and you're crying out, Oh God, you have to know that you have to wait upon the Lord. Amen? His timing. We're living in a microwave society. We don't want to wait. It's one of the hardest things for us to do. But I'll remind you of how does God build the fruit of the Spirit in our lives. You know, it's because of trials, tribulation, and sometimes it's because we need to wait. Patience is a part of the fruit of the Spirit. Hello? Long-suffering and endurance is a part of the fruit of the Spirit. So how is that ever going to be developed in your life or my life if God just jumps and just, hey, we got an emergency. God gets on His Holy Ghost bicycle, rides down there. I'm on my way, Joe. You know, I don't think it works that way. And sometimes we think God needs that. How many of you know your emergency is not always God's emergency? How many of you know when you're panicking, God's never panicking? How many of you know when we're not in control, God's always in control? And so we have to see that when we pray, and then there's a process in allowing God to work. God, as we sing that Waymaker song, right? God is always working when it seems like He's not working. Can you say amen? So as we pray and as we're in, you know, seeking the Lord, and how many of you know it's the difficulties in life that makes us press in a little stronger? It makes us pray a little bit stronger. Amen. You know, pain will motivate you to pray. How many of you know that? How many of you know when you're in severe pain, you'll just about promise God anything? Is that not true? Isn't that how it is? How many of you know when you're in sincere pain, you begin to repent? I mean, you repent of everything. Every little thing. God, what did I do? <laughs> you know, to, you know and, and so there's an examination. You know how we are. That's just how it is. You know, and so God knows when... And, and what He's doing. Can we say, man, we just have to wait upon the Lord. But during that time, maybe God is saying at the same time, He's saying, okay, I want you to take the next step. I want you to move into the area. I want you to, uh, you know, do what I've asked you to do. How many of you know God is never going to move you no farther than your obedience to the last thing that He's told you to do? And sometimes we're praying and we're saying, God, do this, God, do that. But yet God is saying, listen, I've asked you, I've told you. Now, listen, I'm talking about a personal relationship. I'm not talking about what the preacher asked you to do or what your wife or your husband or your child. No, 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 no. What did the Lord tell you to do? What has the Lord spoken to you? And so how many of you know he knows your secrets? Hello? He knows your secrets. And he's saying, listen. Here's what I want you to do. So many times God's waiting on us and the same time we're waiting on Him. And so that's what a relationship is. Prayer is communication, constantly communicating with God. You know, there's yes, we can pray going down the road. We can even pray in the shower and pray on the toilet. We can do that. But there's a time when we need to go in and shut the door and pray to Him in secret. And He said, listen, that's my intimate time. That's when we spend some time together. That's when we can t have a little talk with Jesus. Can we say amen? How many of you know He knows how to uh, uh, you know, adjust our attitudes? <laughs> how many of you know He knows how to get things out of us? Can we say amen? But it's spending time in the presence of God. But yet God is waiting upon us. And so we come to this chapter last week and we was talking about Joshua. Moses is dead. Obviously, Joshua spent lots of time with Moses. When you read about Joshua, you know, if you want to read about 
Moses, and Moses was going up into the mountain to meet with God. Well, Joshua was right there behind him. He wasn't up there at the top, but he was right there behind him. If you read about Joshua, you'll see that when the tabernacle you know, was constructed, and then the pillar of cloud would come, which meant the presence of God would come down upon that tabernacle. The Bible says that Moses would go in and visit. How many of you know if you read the Bible, Joshua was right there too. Many of the children of Israel, they was afraid of the power and the presence of God, but yet Joshua was the one, I'm not afraid. And, you know, he had another spirit. How many of you know when they sent the 12 spies out, he was the two that came back and says, hey, this is God's promised land. Let's go and take it. The 10 others discouraged the people. You know, when you find somebody that spends time in the presence of God, then you find a man of God or a woman of God. You find someone of faith. You find somebody that believes God, trusts God, and, and is able to uh, be obedient. So the past generation under Moses, God says, listen, because of your murmuring, your complaining, your disobedience, uh, you know, you're going to die in the wilderness. And how many of you know God is a God of love? God is a God of mercy. God is a God of grace. Can we say amen? But God is also a God of judgment. And when He says He's going to do something, He's going to do it. Can we say amen? And so anyway, Joshua and Caleb was the two that had to wait. God had already given them the promises, right? And they had to wait. They had to wait. They had to wait. But their day came. And now He is the head cheese. Now He's in control. Now he's got all of these people. You know, Moses says, I've had enough. Okay, come on, Moses. Come on up here. How many of you know Moses had it difficult? <laughs> Hallelujah. Pastoring, you know, uh, a million people or more that murmured and complained all the time. Oh, he needed to spend time with God. Can we say amen? Hallelujah. But that's not like New Hope Worship Center. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. But anyway, Joshua and God has begun to speak to him and says, now it's time. Now it's time. And Joshua would spend time in the presence of God. He would get his instructions and God was encouraging him. You'll see that the Scriptures is encouraging him. I was with Moses, Joshua. I'm with you. Joshua, listen to me. It's time to move forward. It's time to make the next step. God's timing. And so Joshua is obedient. You know, we find that what he told him to do, he says, listen, I want you to circumcise all of the people who had not been circumcised. What? We're getting ready to go into war and you want us to go into war wounded? No, 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 no. And, but it was very symbolic. God says, listen, you're not going to go in the strength of your flesh. You're going to go in the power of the Holy Spirit. And so God knows how we need to cut the flesh off to be able to walk in the power of the Holy Spirit. And the Paul just tells us that no, circumcision was just symbolic of the circumcision of the heart. Amen? That God is cutting out the old and God wants to put in the new. Amen? Uh, you know, there's, uh, it's, it's very difficult to put new wine in old wineskins, right? And so there needs to be a circumcision. But anyway, they were prepared. They was planning. And now he was obedient to what God told him to do. And he says, Joshua, listen. You know, every step that you take, I'm going to be with you. And you got to hear that because it's so incredible. You're going to face enemies. You're going to face trials, tests, troubles. But yet every step that you take, I am going to be with you. And so we find that when he began to take that step of faith and believe God, you know, what God was telling him to do didn't make sense naturally. But Proverbs says what? Proverbs 3, 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Lean not upon your own understanding, but acknowledge Him and He'll do what? He'll guide your steps. He'll lead you to where you need to go. And so we find that Moses defined natural uh, instincts, if you will. Uh, he told the priest to go down to the water, Jordan, and he said, I want you to tell the priest to take that step of faith, and they stepped in the water. When they stepped in the water, they had the Ark of the Covenant that represent the very presence of God. The Word of God was with them. And so what happened? You know, the waters parted. They crossed on dry land. They got to the other side. And as God was with Moses, so He was with Joshua. 
But they had to take that step. They had to leave their past behind. How many of you know we're constantly leaving our past behind? How many of you know you can't do anything about yesterday? You can whine and cry and you can do everything. It, it could have been the best year or, or the worst year, but you can't do anything about it. All we can do is move forward. Can we say amen? And take that next step towards the Lord. Amen? And so when they stepped into the water, they saw God's miraculous power. Now you and I today, there's no way we can figure out how that water parted, but God did it. Can we say amen? So likewise, they get on the other side and now... You know, the, the first city is Jericho, and it is an incredible fortified city. Big, tall walls, thick, impossible for penetration from the human standpoint. But God told them to do what? March. In other words, take one step at a time. One step at a time. And they begin to take one step at a time. And you know, after seven days, God's number is the number, seven is what? The number of completion. Can we say Amen. And so when they took that final step, God told them to do what? Shout. And they shouted, and uh, it's because of their bad breath that those walls fell down, right? No. They shouted because God told them to shout, and the walls come crumbling down. And there was a mighty victory, and they went into the city, and, and they uh, you know, spoiled you know, the, the Jerichoites, if you will, and God gave a great victory. But I want to tell you that, that, you know, they had to be brave. They had to be courageous. You know, I heard one preacher say, why did they march six days around the wall and couldn't say a word? And he said, because um, if they started talking, they'd probably talk themselves out of it. You know, and I think sometimes we need to shut mouth and do what God tells us to do. Can we say amen? But anyway, so many people emphasize the shout, but I want to tell you the stepping had to take place before the shouting had to take place. Amen? And we find, but here's what I want you to know, that as you look at the strategy, okay, that was just the first city. That was just the first step. But yeah, how many of you know it was just the beginning? They had to take another step. They had to take another step. Where? Well, the next city was Ahi. If you read the Scriptures... This time, they had a sense of confidence and they had a sense of expectation. But yes, something happened in Jericho that Joshua didn't know about. Achan had stole things that he wasn't supposed to steal. See, God says, listen, I want everything to be destroyed. And so uh, Achan, and uh, he, he saw some, the lust of the eye, amen? And he began to grab something and so it brought, uh, you know, disdain upon the children of Israel. Well, Joshua didn't know that. So now they're stepping towards the next city and the Bible clearly says that Joshua didn't seek the Lord. So they go to fight the next battle and they were defeated. And Joshua is just all upset. What, God, you just promised me? And God says, listen, Joshua. And God was stern. Well, I'm just going to share what, you know, the interpretation. Joshua, you should have sought me because we got to deal with something before we take the next step we got to deal with something. And God began to uh, you know, do what He did until they found out who had done what they did. And once again, judgment came upon Achan and his whole family. But my point is that they had to seek the Lord for every step that they took. And one of the things that I shared last week, that what God wants you and I to be able to grow in is our faith and our confidence in God's character. Don't doubt. God was speaking to me clearly. Don't doubt my love. Don't doubt my character. And don't doubt my power. Don't doubt my love. Don't doubt my character. You know, if I told you to do something and you do it, then I'm going to show up and I'm going to do what I've asked you to do. In other words, you've got to take that step. And if you take that step, I'm going to be there with you. And if I said that I'm going to guide you, I'm going to guide you. How many of you know the Bible says that, uh, that as many are led of the Spirit of God, they are called the children or the sons of God. Can we say amen? But it's taken that step. It's taken that step. And so here now they're, they're, they're into the promised land. And how many of you know that's what God wants us to do? God wants us to take step after step. I want to remind you, tie it all together. This is a new year. This is 2000 and 
22, right? How many of you know that it's a new chapter in your life? And I've said many times, you know, over the past few weeks that each year is a new chapter. So each year God has an assignment, God has a battle plan, God has something for you and I. It isn't enough about last year, it's about this year. That's why we pray and fast in the beginning of the year. God, okay, it's a new year. How many of you believe that your body is not your own, that your body is purchased, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb? How many of you believe that we're supposed to be doing what He has asked us to do? But here is where, you know, I want you to turn to Psalms 46. Psalms 46. This is what God was echoing in me uh, this, this week and last night. And so as we turn to... Um, Psalms 46, I want to share what this scripture says, but I want us to truly concentrate on verse 10. I'm going to read the chapter, but yet 10 is what I want to get to. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Even though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with its swelling, there is a river whose streams shall make glad the city of God. And water represents the Holy Spirit. The holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her just at the break of dawn. The nations raged and kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice and the earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Come, behold the work of the Lord who has made desolations in the earth. He makes war cease and to end of all of the earth. He breaks the bow and cuts the spear in two. He burns the chariot in the fire. Verse 10, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted. What God was speaking to me, and I had a little confusion going on in my mind because I said, Lord, last week I was speaking on move forward and conquer. And now you're saying, be still <laughs> and know that I am God. And I'm thinking, Lord, the people are going to be confused because I'm confused. <laughs> so help me. And God began to tie it all together. He began to put the puzzle together. And so what God was saying is that, you know, there's a paradox. How many of you know what a paradox is? A paradox is a truth that seems to be contradicting. A truth that seems to be contradicting. So what God was impressing upon my heart is that you see these scriptures. I want you to know my strength. I want you to know my power. I want your faith to be put in me because I am your refuge. I am your strong tower. I am with you. How many of you know that if the Holy Ghost lives inside of you, the Spirit of the living God lives inside of you, that God lives inside of you? And it's only by faith that you understand that, that He's with you. And how many of you know He can defeat every sickness and disease and every devil in the name of the Lord? But He is saying, what He was saying to me and what He wanted me to say to you is that Joshua had to go in and be still be still, wait and be still and know that I am God. When you come into that place of prayer, you come into that place of seeking Him, then how many of you know there's so many worries and fears? How many of you know that many times you go into your place of prayer and your mind is going everywhere? It's like a top. It's just spinning, 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 spinning. Are you with me? And it takes time for you to just get in there 
First thing you need to do is start praising Him. Thank Him for the cross. It's only through the cross that we have relationship. Amen? Through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. You begin to praise Him. Begin to praise Him. Thank Him. How many of you are glad that He's the Creator of the heavens and the earth? How many of you know that He has all power? See, you got to remind yourself. You know, sometimes you're talking to God, you're not telling Him what to do, but you're reminding yourself as of His omnipotence. Amen? That means that He's all-powerful. Can we say amen? you got to remind yourself as His omnipresent. That means that He's everywhere, and there's nowhere that you're going to go that He doesn't know. And how how many of you know his omniscient? He knows everything. Amen. He knows everything about everything. And I'm so glad that he is omnipresent. Amen. He's omniscient and he's omnipotent in all of his ways. Can we put our hands together and say amen? But when you come in, when you come in and you begin to seek him, you've got to give it time. Listen, for every blessing, there's a new battle. For every battle, there's a new battle planned. And for you to take the next step, you need to know what the next step is. If you don't hear from Him, you don't know what the next step is. And that's where the confusion comes in, and that's where, well, I just don't know. How many of you know God didn't call you to just come in and sit on a seat and go back home and say, hey, I did my church duty? How many of you know that's not Christianity? How many of you know, you know, God just called me to come. How many of you know sometimes we worship the wrong things? People worship denominations. I remember back in the day that some people worshiped the King James Version only. If you didn't have the King James, I mean, hey, you wasn't a Christian. I mean, people worship all kinds of things. Some people worship music. I mean, they live for music. And then some people, they worship worship. All they want to do is just worship all the time. And that's good until it gets out of control and say, listen, it's good to worship. And how many of you know we want to continue to encourage people to worship? But worship is just not praise. Worship is being obedient to what God has asked us to do. So in the midst of worship and in the midst of praise Him, we need to hear what the Lord is saying. Can we say amen? Giving Him glory. We're not minimizing worship. We want to continue to encourage. Amen? Can we say Amen. You know, but I think about China. Think about the strongest and the fastest growing church in the world. How many of you know they don't have uh, music conferences in China? <laughs> How many of you know everything's done underground and China is growing? I said the church is growing and there's people coming to know Jesus, you know, all the time. So anyway, we got to get our spiritual attitudes right, if you will. But anyway, God wants us to spend time to be able to hear what And so God begins to show you and show, okay, this step, this step. I want to go back to you, this chapter in your life. How many of you remember when you were a teenager? Some of you are still teenagers. How many of you know that you shouldn't still be a teenager? You know, if you're 30 years old, can we say amen? But anyway, you look at the years. How many of you remember the day that you gave your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ? How many of you remember that? How many of you know that He saved you? You, you didn't choose Him, He chose you. How many of you know that He put a calling on your life? How many of you remember that year? And then how many of you, amen, give Him praise. But how many of you remember from that time, and I would share and I share all the time, that you know, when God transformed my life, I walked out the door a different person. Nobody had to tell me to read the Bible. I went home and I threw it away. All my rock and roll albums, I threw them all away. Ron said, don't do that. Somebody might want them. I said, I don't want somebody else to have that junk. Look what it did to my life. I don't want somebody else to have it. You know, and so nobody had to tell, tell me to do that. I was began to be a man of prayer because I wanted to know God. I couldn't even read the Bible because all I'd done is read the newspaper and the sports sections. And so now I had to get a dictionary and started to, uh, God, what are you saying? How many of you know when you begin to read the Bible, sometimes you're confused because you don't even know yourself what you're reading? That's why church is important. That's why preach is important. Can we say amen? And so anyway, that year took place. And then how many of you know that God has a plan and a process? Okay, when you're first saved, let me tell you, you're so selfish and you're all you want. Oh God, I'm a mess <laughs> and clean up my mess. How many of you know that's pretty well, uh, you know, the standard procedure? You're so focused. Oh God, take this away. God, take that away. How many of you know that's a good thing? 
It's a part of sanctification, and that's, hey, we still preach that, right? You know, the constant relationship between the Lord. But yet then, God begins to say, okay, you got to get your eyes up off yourself, and you begin to get your eyes on other people. And now I'm taking you to another dimension. How many of you know when you're young, you don't have a whole lot of responsibility? But as you get older, you get more responsibility. You get married, you have a wife or a husband, right? It used to be you just take care of yourself. Now you got to take care of... And then you have children. Woo! And then some people, they marry into blended families, and now they got a lot of children. But now you got more responsibility. Used to be you lived on mom and daddy's you know, dollar all the time, but mom and dad says, get out and get your own worm. And now you got to go out and work. So you see that your responsibility, and God begins to say, listen, it's not all about you. It's about what I've called you to do. How many of you believe God didn't save you just to breathe His air and eat His food? So He's got a plan and a purpose for our lives. And so, you know, as I said, that every time that we begin to try to move forward, see, the enemy is going to do everything that he can to try to stop you, discourage you. And, and so that's what we have to see. And what I want to do is what God laid upon my heart is to be able to help you and I to be able to see that God's got a plan per day, per month, per year for your life. And it's up to you and I to be obedient and take that next step. And I look out in this audience and I see how people here has taken that next step. And I thank God for it. How many of you know it's a step of faith? You've got to overcome your fears. You've got to overcome your concerns. You've got to overcome your doubts. Amen? You've got to overcome your insecurities. You've got to overcome, I can't do it. Yes, you can do it, right? You can do it. Can we say Amen. And so how many of you know you need a kick in the butt sometimes? And God says, get up and get it done. Get over your fears. Get over your doubt. This is what I've called you to do. God wastes nothing. You have a testimony. And you need to do what I've asked you to do. Can we say amen? But it's that next step. I'm telling you what. Many people, they're so caught up in their selves that they're so guilty sometimes. How can I do anything for the Lord? Oh, and the spirit of condemnation is upon you and the devil keeps you in condemnation and you got to shake it off in the name of Jesus. You're redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. You're a child of God. You are saved by grace through faith, not of works, lest any man boast. It is a gift of God. God is the one saved you. You didn't save yourself. He's the one who came and invaded your life and says, listen, I got something better for you. You got to get over yourself. If you wait until you're perfect to do ministry, then you're going to be waiting until you die. Because you're always going to have battles. You're always going to have wars. You're always going to have temptations. You're always going to have this. Why? Because now you've entered into the kingdom. Now you've entered into the kingdom of God. Now you're walking in a different realm. And the enemy is going to meet you there and you've got to be able to face him down and say, get out of my way in the name of Jesus. God has called you and I to make a difference upon planet earth. And he's calling the church. He says, listen, it's time to pray. It's time to repent. It's time to get up. It's time to move forward. It's time to start conquering. Conquer your fears. Conquer your concerns. Conquer your doubts. Listen, some people need to conquer their jealousy. They need to conquer. I mean, the, whatever it is that they need to conquer. Some people's got bitterness. You need to get rid of it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Anger. You know what somebody did to you in the past. Well, listen, how many of you know that Jesus forgives you every time that you call upon His name? How many of you know that He forgives you? If you don't forgive others, neither will I forgive you. You better get over it. I said you better get over it. But what... A, Thank you, Holy Spirit.
Have your way, Lord. Have your way, Lord. We thank you this morning. Hallelujah. 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 Father, we just thank you. We just give you praise for all that you're doing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is a day to conquer. It is a day to move forward. Come and let me take the things out of you that are destroying your life. I love you and I am with you, but you have to let them go. Come to me and let me have it. I am with you and it is time to go forward, but you have to be willing to go with me, says the Lord. I love you. I'm with you. I am with you. Don't be discouraged and don't be afraid. Let the fear go. This world will spiral out of control, but not my people, says the Lord. I will use you to help save those in this world. I will fill your mouth and I will fill your hearts if you will but trust in me and let the things go that you have no need to carry. I love you and I will mend your heart. I'm with you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, the Bible says, be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. Listen, God's saying, be still and know that I'm your Savior. Be still and know that I forgive sin. Be still and know that I can break every addiction. Be still and know that I am the healer. Listen, be still and know that I raised Pharaoh up and I took Pharaoh down. Be still and know that I have all power and authority. God is saying, be still and know that Nebuchadnezzar, I used him, but I made Nebuchadnezzar grow feathers and he was uh, eating grass. And I restored Nebuchadnezzar and I put him back in. And how many of you know God says that I changed Nebuchadnezzar? Be still and know this. It's, it's what God is saying to His people. Be still and know. And what God was burning in my heart and what God was be burning in my spirit is that when you begin to take that next step, God expects you to take it by faith. Are you listening to me? And God laid upon my heart, I want you, He's using my life, I'm saying, okay, Lord, I'm not bragging. You know, it's very difficult to talk about what God has done in your life many times. So this is not a prideful, uh, you know, uh, uh, sharing, if you will, but it's a factual sharing. When God says, take one step at a time, I want you to listen to me. This is my life. God called me to be a pastor. I went to my wife and told her, and she said, well, God didn't call me. But that was the first step. How many of you know she came along? God called me and said, I want you to plant New Hope Worship Center. I want you to start a new church. That's another step. It's a step that, oh, I didn't want... Listen, I would be labeled the reluctant pastor. But God says, no. I said, Lord, I'm not able. I'm not capable, whatever. This is what I've asked you to do. I want you to name the church New Hope Worship Center. We named the church New Hope Worship Center. God told us, go get the children. We've been together, in the, you know, we're in our uh, living room. And now we're going out into the community, taking a van, and we're doing what God has called. Okay, Lord, what's the next step? Guess what? During that time, we had a computer-controlled piano. So we just stick a little floppy disk in there and just disk and, and then push a button, and we had praise and worship. I said, I'm not doing this by myself, and I gave a Sunday school.